hello welcome back to my channel lumsy sews in today's sewing tutorial i'll be sharing with you how i made this deep cow neck top it's very simple and it's beginner friendly all you need to know is just how to make a simple basic bodice block you can use any dartless simple bodice block to make this depending on the way you want the shirt to be on your body if you want it to be a fitted one or you want it to be a loose one as long as the basic block is dartless it would work with this same pattern so let's start with the tutorial to make this i'll be using two years of fabric you can use chiffon to make this you can use satin you can use crepe you can use um, duchess to make this so here I have two yards of fabric. Before I start, I would like you to know that the shirt I'm making with the bodice pattern I'm using is not a loose one. It's going to be a fitted one. But the one on the thumbnail is a loose one and it has a drop shoulder. So I'll drop the link of both this pattern that I'm going to use and a loose um, shirt pattern. So this pattern is the part the deep cow neckline i made the last time that's what i'm going to use i just want to reduce some things just to reduce it to the waistline where i want it to be so i'm going to reduce it to somewhere like 20 26 inches so that's what i have here as you can see this is equal don't mind these lines these lines are not it's just from the paper i was using so let me take away this one you have to pay attention here so that you understand how i made the neckline the deep neckline so i'm going to cut up this is the armhole line i'm going to cut that open and i'm going to slash and spread it so guys but watch till the end so that you don't miss any tricks here so here is my pattern i placed it on this line i'm going to spread it so cut it very well so that you'll be able to spread properly so i'm going to spread it and i'm going to the spread i'm going to make it like seven inches you can make it to be more but you know most times it's always better you use seven inches so i'm going to use like seven inches mind you guys i'm using a half scale i just want to show you and i go over to my main fabric so i'll open up this thing in to seven inches and i'll mark all the silhouettes guys pay attention here so i will mark both the neckline i will draw out both the neckline because this has a collar and so from this line, the center line, I'm going to square out a line. You square out from the center line. Make sure you take note of what I'm doing. I finished recording when I found out that my phone was not recording. So I'm going to start all over again. You can see I'm done with the pattern. So guys, I'm going to do this again. Hello, my neighbor's children will not let me rest. <laughs> so... I'm going to cut it out again so you see what I did. Placed it here, increased it by 7 inches, right? So I got this. This is what I got after spreading it out. So next thing I did was to square out from this at the edge. Remember this is the center front. This is the center front, right? So after spreading it, after spreading it, you square out from the center front down this way. So this is what I have here. I will tape this one back so that I'll use it for my back pattern. So I'll go ahead and tape it back. I'll tape it back off camera. So next thing I did, we're going to get a facing for this. For us to get a facing, just like what you have here, we need a facing for the shirt. So I'm going to fold in here. Let me just cut out like this. So I notched where I want my facing to stop, which is here. That's where I want the facing to stop. So I'm going to fold it in like this. And then I'm going to cut out the neckline. So the neckline, cut the neckline full. 
the neckline has to be full just notch where you want the facing to stop so i have notched it i'm going to open this out this is where i notched so i'm going to make like a v neck to make for the casing for the um facing so just do something, you know, the more you increase the facing, the more you take fabrics for your distance. This is just for you to have a facing. So I'm just going to come this way. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Just come this way. This is just basically facing for or lining, whatever you call it. This is how the front pattern would be. I'll go ahead and close this up and I'll use it for the back. So we have our pattern that we're going to use. I'll use this and cut out on my fabric. Make sure you notch all the places that needs to be notched. Like now this is where the neckline is and this is the sleeve. So make sure you notch them so that it will help you when you're sewing it. So after cutting it, this is how it looks. I'm going to show you how the deep cow neck looks. How deep it is. Can you see how the deep cow neck is? Yeah, so... The next thing is for us to start sewing it. You see how deep it is. So next thing I will do now is to overlock the facing. You overlock it and you're going to baste it. You baste the neckline. Can you see? You baste the neckline together and you will go ahead and join the shoulder. So you join the shoulder to the back. Let me do all of that and show you the next thing to do. So after overlocking this and basting this together, I'll go ahead and join the shoulder. And then, after joining the shoulder, I will close the, the side seam. This is it, after sewing it, I've sewn the side seam, hemmed the shoulder, and also basted the lining. Can you see? So, the next thing, I also, I have also hemmed the lower part. So, the next thing we'll have to do now is to cut the sleeve. To cut the sleeve, take the measurement from the armhole, the bodies of the shirt. So, I'm going to measure from the shoulder to the to the armhole to the um, length so what I have here is nine and a half that's what I use and cut out the sleeve so I'm going to fold my fabric into two so here my fabric is folded into two as you can see the next thing I'll do is to fold it again into four because we are cutting the two sleeve at the same time so what we measured was nine and a half inches i'm going to get nine and a half inches plus half inch sewing allowance which will make it 10 inches so you're going to make this to be 10 inches what i have here is 10 inches so this will be the width of my sleeve so from this i'm going to come down five inches and mark it here and then the next thing I would take is the length of the sleeve. The length of the sleeve. Okay, let me make the sleeve to be, the sewing allowance to be one inch because of the slit at the lower hem. So I'll make it to be ten and a half. Because of the slit there, I'm going to be using here yeah, ten and a half. So I'm going to come down five inches. Next, I'm going to mark the length of the sleeve. For the length of the sleeve, I'm going to make it 28 inches. That is because it has a fold and, um, yeah, and the, it came down to almost somewhere like this. So if it came down somewhere like this, it should be like 25 inches. So if I add um, for the fold, which is 2 inches, 27, then sewing allowance to make it 28. So I'll make it 28. I don't want it to come down that too low. Let me just make it 28. I'm going to place my tape diagonally like this. Remember, this is the one inch sewing allowance, so that's where I will stop my line. So I'm going to mark a line like this. From here to here, I'm going to measure it and know what I have. What I have here is 11, half of it will be 5.5. I'll mark 5.5 here. So I'm going to draw the sleeve head like this, come down lower and go that way. So let me just go ahead and cut that.
for the sleeve we are going to be making a slit for me to do that i'll just mark from the hem i'll come up like seven inches and mark five inches let me make it for five inches so i'll come up like five inches and notch that place so now i'll go to my machine now and sew this close I'll go to my machine and close the sleeve with one inch sewing allowance. I'll close it one inch sewing allowance. I'll close it and the remaining part for the sleeve, I'm going to fold this like this and fold again. Can you see what I'm doing? In fact, let's go to the machine and do this. So I've gone ahead and finished that, the slit as you can see. Then I made a running stitch because I need to, um, I need to gather this. So you measure round your wrist, whatever it is, make sure you gather this to be the same length with your wrist. Then you're going to add one inch for bottom stand, half inch on this side, half an inch on this side. So after gathering it, this is how it looks. The next thing is to cut the cuff. For me to cut the cuff, I have interfaced one side of my fabric like this, as you can see. So I'm going to fold it like this, fold again like this, and then I'm going to fold again like this, making it into four for the two sides of the sleeve. But guys, I want to be on the safe side, so I'm going to cut out one in case my camera is not recording so that I will still see something to, to show you with. So see what I did? I interfaced one side of my fabric. The length I have here is 21 inches. That would be enough for the two, two cuffs. So I f and then the length is 14 inches. So I folded it into two like this. Folded in again into four. And then I folded again. This will give me for the two cuff. But guys, to be on the safe side, I'm going to cut one first. If my camera didn't, wasn't recording, I'll see something to, you know, to show you guys with so I'll fold my fabric like this okay still recording <laughs> so guys this side is the lower part so let me put it let's show you so this side is the lower part right I'm going to take the measurements of my wrist what I have here is seven inches as you can see so you divide that by two seven inches divided by two will give you three and a half right so I'm going to add one inch for um, half inch for button stand, which will make it four inches, and then half inch for sewing allowance, which will make it four and a half. So I'm going to get four and a half inches here and take it down. So I hope my camera is still recording. It's still recording. Okay, yeah, so. I'm on the safe side, so I'll just go ahead and cut the two sides. And the length of the cuff I'm using is six inches. I'll add half inch to that for sewing allowance. In fact, let me make it sewing allowance, which is half inch. So I'll cut it out here like this. So now this would be for the cuff. I'll go to my machine now, close it to this place, close it to that place so that it will be easy for me to attach to the sleeve so let me do that and come back to you so this is it after sewing it oh God, this off this is it after sewing it can you see so right side facing together the side that has the interfacing is the right side so right side facing together i sew it as you can see how it's looking so the next thing i'm going to do now is to I'm going to use a stitch in the ditch method. I've used this method severally on my channel. So I'm just going to fold this into it like this. 
making sure it overlaps the previous place that I have sewn. So you place it like this and you're going to go ahead and pin it. If you're doing a stitch in the ditch, if you're doing a stitch in the ditch, make sure you use the exact same um, color of your fabric. So I'll go to my machine now and sew inside here. That is inside this ditch where you have sewn before. By the time you're done sewing, the, by the time you're done sewing, the stitches will disappear. And this is how it looks. This is the inside, as you can see. You can see the thread here, but you cannot see it on the right side. Can you see? So let me just go ahead and put this sleeve on so that you see the next thing to do. So this is it like this. The next thing you would do is to add a button stand. Just add a button here, just one button. Can you see? This is how it's looking very neat. You see how it's looking? Just one, one button, button hole. If you wanted it to be a pin like this, then you shouldn't have added the... Um, the button stand allows for the button stand then you can use a hook for it like this it's also okay like that so the next thing is for us to add this to the bodies block so um, the main bodies we're going to add it to it so for you to add that what you would do is to you will notch first of all notch this piece and then right side facing together you, you pin it first of all at the arm armhole area like that you pin it there and also pin it on the upper side can you see where is my sleeve yeah so you're going to go ahead and pin it there and you're going to sew it around Next, the final step is now to cut the collar the shirt collar to cut that you're going to take the measurement of the shirt i have folded it into two like this so I'm going to take from here down to the back of the neckline. What I have here is 9 inches. So I'm going to cut my collar. The shirt collar, uh, the same thing I did to the cuff. I have interfaced one side. I'm going to fold it into two like this. And fold it again into two. It's a very simple shirt collar is a flat shirt collar so we're not going to do anything but taking just the measurements we have here so for the length of the shirt collar i want it to be three inches so i'm going to make it three and a half for sewing allowance and then we got nine inches i'm going to add half inch to that which will make it nine and a half so i'm going to cut this at nine and a half So I'll do the same thing I did to the collar. I'm going to go ahead and close it here, close it, join it to the shirt and do the, the same thing I did. I will do the stitch in a ditch. So let me do all of that and show you the final. So this is it. After pinning it down, can you see? This is the front and this is the back. So I'll go ahead to my machine now and I'm going to stitch it inside here. Just the same thing I did to the cuff. And I'll show you guys the final look. So this is it after I was done. Can you see how deep the neckline is? The neck, the deep cow neckline is, is very deep. Can you see? This is almost to the waistline. You can see. So guys, and the cough is reporting. Can you guys see? Yeah. So I've come to the end of today's video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.